When I started adopting Bun about two months ago, I was really impressed about its performance. And not only this, the convenient tooling and API that comes with it made working with Bun a great experience. But there was also some friction adopting it. At the end of this video you should be able to decide whether you want to give it a shot as well. So let's have a look at performance. The main goal of BUN is to beat Node.js performance-wise. It's faster in package installs, startup time and I.O. operations. For I.O. operations like API calls, database access and file system access, it's really a good choice. But of course, the JavaScript that is executed within BUN is still just in time compiled and runs single threaded. So for CPU intensive tasks, a compiled multi threaded language like Go or even Rust is better suited. BUN is meant to be a drop in replacement for Node.js. It implements a large portion of Node's API. So for many small or medium sized Node.js projects, it should be straightforward to migrate to BUN. However, I have had two issues migrating to BUN. First, building my quick application does not work within the Docker container in my GitLab pipeline. So for now, I build my application with npm, but I deploy it with BUN in a Docker container. In my content service, I am using the Sharp npm package to optimize my images. The second issue that I had with BUN was that installing this Sharp npm package didn't work within the pipeline. So for this I had to use npm as well. But luckily this was fixed with version 1017 of BUN. So the support of npm packages is getting better. I think the easiest way to find out whether BUN works with your setup is just try and error. What I really like about BUN is its new command line interface. The command bun init creates a package JSON, a readme and a tsconfig.json out of the box. This is especially great if you are a TypeScript developer. And what's really cool is bun comes with a watch mode baked in. You can enable it with the watch flag. So there is no need anymore for nodemon or esbuild. The bun API is exposed via a bun object and the BUN modules. This API is more abstract than that of Node.js. BUN.5, for example, creates a BUN file object that implements the blob interface. This gives us easy access to this file. We can read it as text, parse it as JSON, get a readable stream from it, or create an array buffer out of it. Using Node's FS package, can achieve the same things, but it's slightly more complicated. Of course, for backward compatibility with Node, this is also implemented in BUN. In BUN, you can create an HTTP server like this. We implement the fetch method, that is our request handler. Within fetch, we create a response and return it. This is different from the Node.js API, where we get the response injected into our request handler. So in the Node.js API, we have to mutate our response object and in the bun API, we can treat the response as immutable. I personally prefer the immutable approach. In Node.js, we have high-level server implementations like Fastify or Express and in bun, there are implementations as well. In my next video, I will cover one of those. BUN not only has a more high-level API, but it also has some convenience functionalities baked in. First, we have the watch mode that we covered earlier. Second, BUN picks up the .env files in your project and you don't need to install the .env package anymore. Third, BUN comes with an SQLite implementation that is quite similar to better SQLite. And then, there is the built-in test runner that beats Jest and Vtest in performance. It has a built-in watch mode and implements a large portion of Jest's API. 
I think it was a good decision to add a performant test runner to BUN because we all should write tests. BUN also comes with TypeScript support out of the box. TypeScript can directly be executed within BUN. The BUN init command creates a TS config file as mentioned before and the watch mode is supported here as well. This is great news for TypeScript backend developers. It also can be used to compile and bundle your code. It's even faster compiled than with ESBuild. BUN can even compile a single executable file for you with the BUN runtime included. So BUN is more than just a JavaScript runtime. It comes with a lot of great tooling to build a serious web project. And there is no need to install a bunch of npm packages just to get your setup running. At the time of recording this, there are still some npm packages that don't work with bun out of the box. But it's only a matter of time that this gap will be closed. And if you want to switch to bun and you are blocked by an npm package, you can think about extracting this package to a separate service or process. If you ask for my opinion, I will be using BUN in every new project I create because of its high-level, high-performance API and its great developer experience. So I wish you a happy coding and see you in the next video.